All right. It's overrated, underrated. You know how it goes. You give us topics, we tell you if they're overrated, underrated, or perfectly rated. Let's bring in uh, producer Josh Elliott Wolf and Ben Basser into the conversation. We will start with this one. We got a lot of it. Yep. Mm. Including this one from Rando. Phil Kessel and his impact on the Vancouver Canucks. So, can I, I think we're in agreement here that Phil Kessel is generally an underrated player. Yes. Like, I feel for a, a guy that has over 400 goals, near 1,000 points in his career, and has won three cups, nobody ever says that about Phil Kessel. No. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I'm the hot dog guy? <laughs> That's pretty much all he is. He doesn't look like a professional hockey player. It's like, yeah, what do you look like, dope? I don't know. <laughs> but he's probably saying, he looks like me. That's the problem. That's my problem. Yeah, except he's, he just happens to be really good at hockey at the same time. He's like a John Daly of hockey. <laughs> he also crushes fitness tests, apparently. Like, he's yeah. usually. He near broke the, the top beep of the test. Team. Isn't that the, the joke that people make? He yeah. broke the beep test? Yeah. So, I, okay. Um, uh, Frankie Corrado, good Woodbridge boy. Uh, I've I've heard from some different people that have played with with Phil Kessel in the past, and it's like it was more just like Kessel didn't always do, especially during training camp, like the other fitness things that guys were having to do. Like, uh, all right, everybody go on the bike. Phil's like going off to the washroom or something. He's like, like I'm that. good. But he's st- he was like he's like the kid in your math class that sits in the back, sleeps through the whole class, and then aces every test. He was just a freak fitness wise. He, he was so okay. Underrated as a player. Yeah. The question was the fit in Vancouver? Yeah. Well, that's overrated. Yeah. If you're expecting Phil Kessel to come in and be this contributor who's going to play a sizable role on this team and put them over the top, that's not what he is. Yeah. At best, he's a, he's a depth option. And perhaps a valuable one if he does sign and if they need him and his skills, he could be good in the locker room with his presence. So I think there are things that he can help with overall as depth. But if you're thinking of him and penciling him into a top six role or anything, yeah. that's what I would overrate. So the the only area that I think Phil Kessel can maybe help the Vancouver Canucks. And I, look, I just said this after standing for Phil Kessel as much as I did. But the like there's two things I think Phil can help with be cover for an injury in case, you know, one of their more offensively, Mm -hmm. you know, one of their guys further up the lineup maybe gets hurt. The Canucks don't have a lot of cover guys that could jump up the lineup and fill those kinds of roles. At least Phil has uh, that track record to him. Although at 36, you'd wonder about his overall game, right? Even though he was pretty good in Vegas last year. But the thing is power play too. Like I tried to look it up today. How many goals does the second power play unit have for the Vancouver Canucks? Does anybody have an two. exact number on this? It's two? Yeah. It's, two. it's less than uh, you can count it on one hand. So my, the, my best research, I was like, okay, how many power play points does Connor Garland have? He's got one. Yes. So <laughs> Well, that's why it's funny. Ch- chances are the pe- second power play unit hasn't done very much for the Vancouver Canucks. Well, that, that's why it's funny as much as, you know, and I agree. I would take Mikheyev. Yeah. Off the power play, put Hoaglander on. Like I don't dispute it, but when people, you know, cite like Garland's power play points, like he has one more power play point than Mikhail. <laughs> one more. <laughs> so it's it, you know, like that's that's the area that maybe Phil can add a little bit of extra help, like improve this team on the margins is their second power play unit. But I would also just be on board to have Phil Kessel join the Canucks, be a part of a team chasing down the President's Trophy, and at the same time get his thousandth point. As an NHL player, because he's only eight points away. Chances are he could get it. Yeah, he could. That would be a fun uh, fun thing. Next one comes from Austin in Langley. Moving Ilya Mikheyev in the summer to keep Dakota Joshua and Teddy Bluger. Just want to say Austin and his crew, uh, great great folks that I saw at uh, the Super Bowl Sunday party. Uh, awesome. Just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah. Love our listeners here on, uh, on Canucks. Central. Oh, they're fantastic. They're the best. They're the best. Uh, uh, good Austin, guy, Austin, too. Great guy. And this, this text... Hurts me a little bit because I am a Mikheyev guy. Uh, I'm going to say overrated moving Mikheyev in the summer to keep Teddy Bluger and, and Dakota Joshua. Mm, interesting. interesting. That's going to be a bit of a hot take, especially with the way Mikheyev's playing right now. Yeah. Well, if he gets his speed back next season and all That's of a sudden... That's kind of what I'm leaning towards, right? Like, can he get his speed back and then be a little bit more of the Ilya Mikheyev we expected to see? I would, you know, for all the talk around Garland and Besser and how all of a sudden they figured it out this year, 
can Mikheyev be the guy who Does bounces that back next, next season, for instance? So, so I'm with you in terms of I, I've always liked Mikheyev. I do think he's not playing the best. I, I think he's seen some positive things here and there. But the idea of moving his money out and signing other players or having the space to do other things, I do think it could be an underrated move. Mm. If the trade-off is like two for one, Joshua and Bluger for Mikheyev, then I take Joshua and Bluger. Okay. Maybe it doesn't have to be those two. It could be other names that you bring in, yeah. potentially with McCabe's sure. money too. So, I uh, got I'd this. Be open to it, I guess. Got this one on the text line: goalie trade value and uh, goalie deadline acquisitions. Overrated or underrated? Uh, I think goalie deadline acquisitions overrated. Not a single deadline acquisition in recent history has helped the team win a Stanley Cup. Jonas Carposalo last year. Yeah, they didn't win the Stanley Cup. No, <laughs> definitely did not win the Stanley Cup. The didn't even get further through the playoffs than they had in any prior prior year. The best one I can think of in recent memory was a Robin Leonard one, and yeah. Vegas had a good run in the playoffs. Obviously, they didn't win the Cup that year, or did they win? The, no, they didn't. No, they no, they won the Cup last year. They didn't win the Cup. Yeah, um, and he played really well. He came onto that team and played really well. That's the only one I can think of in recent history that was actually like good. And that still didn't get you to a Stanley Cup. So there isn't a ton of in-season goalie trades that have actually like worked to a Stanley Cup level. But Luongo from Vancouver to Florida worked pretty well for Florida that year, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think they, you know, especially going on beyond that, like Luongo had actually a little bit left in the tank where he played pretty well. Dwayne Rolison was an acquisition for Edmonton in 2006. They went to the Cup Final that year that's on, good. on the back that was of Rolison. Yeah, that was a good one. Uh, Almost ben, when he got hurt in the Cup Final. Yeah. Uh, ben Bishop from, I guess, the Senators to, to Tampa Bay. They had some success. Yeah. Didn't win a Cup, obviously, uh, in that year, but nope. Ben Bishop was a good find for, for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So... Like, there's been some good finds. It's just it doesn't ever really work out to be a Stanley Cup-level find. No. As uh, far as values go, like, goalies aren't getting the trade value that they used to. You know? They don't really have that value. I mean, and it's funny. When the Canucks traded Corey Schneider for the ninth overall pick, there was a big outcry that the Canucks did not get enough. Yeah. And no goalie trade since then has netted as much value as that trade has. Like, that's the most value any team has gotten yeah. for a goaltender. Like uh, in the past, like, decade and a bit. There's only a couple of guys that have been traded for a first-round pick, right? Yeah. It's like Robin Leonard. Leonard for first-round pick. Uh, I think Martin Jones as well. I think so. And went from Boston to San Jose for a first-round pick. Ryan Miller at the deadline Yeah, went for uh, a first-round pick, and th- that didn't work out. There's just but like it wasn't not like many high cases pick. where a first-round pick, like, well, think of it this way. How many teams use a first-round pick on a goalie anymore? They it's very rare. It. Right, so goalies tend to just not be worth the value of of other rentals in season or in general. So yeah. uh, maybe Jacob Markstrom or UC Saros makes that different. Like, but Markstrom is playing at a Vesna level right now. Saros has been a Vesna guy the last couple of years, so maybe they do get a pretty decent haul. But I don't know if it's something that would be eye poppingly huge. Yeah, uh, we got a couple of texts I want to get to on this really quickly. Uh, Jeffro, Canucks gave up a second round pick for Mika Norinen. <laughs> didn't quite work out. He was supposed to be the next Mika Kiprasov, but that didn't happen. Or Ryan and Langley. Was, was, Mika, the, was it just like, well, his name is Mika. Mika Kiprasov is pretty good. Well, that must be up. it. Well, there yeah, were you know, both San Jose guys, <laughs> yeah. you know, to some extent. You know what I mean? There's certain things there about them or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And there was some value there potentially. But uh, Kiprasov, Ryan and Langley says, that was a good one too. Yeah. The Flames uh, got Get, getting oh, Kiprasov. Almost won the Stanley Cup, and he yeah. was a big part of it. 